I think social psychology is hugely important now, uh, more than ever, because especially in the last few years, there's been a lot of sort of contestation, tension between what is true and what's false. Um, so let me give you two very recent examples. Um, there's a lot in the news these days in public discourse about fake news. What is real news? What's fake news? Uh, how do people get persuaded by something that's fake but that sounds real? Um, another good example is climate science. There are uh, people in, in many quarters of, of sort of social life, more than uh, we would hope, who question climate science and look at piles of data showing that human beings have a contribution to make to uh, climate change, but don't recognize it as being true. Social psychology has a lot to say about this distinction between what's true and what's false. We are the field that, that has these theories about attitudes and persuasion. We are in a perfect position to ask questions about what makes people, what are the conditions under which people are persuaded uh, by something that's fake. Um, what inoculates people against uh, being being sort of taken in or gullible, being gullible, uh, and what are the individual differences that make some people more likely to believe something that's that's uh, false than than others? These are basic questions about attitudes and persuasion. Another thing that we do very well is that our research is on judgment and decision making. We are in a great position to try and understand how do you persuade uh, non-scientists who are policy makers and decision makers um, and allow them to see the validity of, of science, both natural science and social science, understand how they might be more persuaded by personal narratives rather than statistics, and then figure out a way to frame our arguments in a way that's persuasive. These are just sort of two big areas where, where our input is sorely needed um, and the time is really ripe. I think the biggest impact social psychology can make is if we, each of us, as scientists in training or um, uh, scientists with, with PhDs, take the core insights of our research, translate it into the practical implications of it, and then take that message and then disseminate it to every possible sort of practical or professional audience at the local level, at the state level, at the national level. Uh, because what that does is it shows people who are not scientists, not social psychologists, the, vari the variety of ways in which social psychology is relevant to everyday life at many levels. Um, so those audiences might be um, our, our politicians, our decision makers. They might be K-12 uh, uh, teachers and administrators uh, and parents. They may be uh, faculty and administrators at universities and colleges. They may be businesses. Um, and I think in, in every case, there's something we have to say, but we need to package it in a way that people can understand how our science is relevant uh, to their professional life or public life. Um, so to, just to give you a few examples, social psychology has a lot to say about debiasing policing, about how to create better marriages and, and relationships, um, about workforce diversity, about how the social context influences public health, human health, um, about the factors that magnify or mitigate intergroup conflict and many other topics like this. But in each of these cases, I think um, the onus is on us to take our science and then talk about it in a way where people who are in law enforcement in public life will understand its relevance. <laughs>